What's up everyone, it's the guy with the best upload schedule here. Hopefully this video will make it up to you because in today's video we're starting a new series on how to make a anti-cheat in housing. Now before all the people go crazy, yes, anti-cheating in housing does sound weird, but I've been working on this system for a few weeks now and I've personally tested it in a house that I'm currently working on with a good amount of players during streams. And honestly, it does work really well. Now I'm not saying this is amazing and will detect every single cheat in your house and automatically ban 100% guaranteed cheaters it's more of a system to alert online staff members that they're maybe doing that someone may be doing something suspicious and you might want to watch them but yeah once again this isn't perfect it's housing this is probably the best you're going to get for something like this but in today's video we're going to start off by going over the basic idea the basic system as well as a check to see if players are flying or using speed basically really fast movements Okay, so before we get started, I am classifying this series as an advanced tutorial. If you're new to the channel and don't know what that means, basically I have tutorials that I classify as advanced, I'm sure you can get from that, that they are not for new housing users. They're not for new housing players. So this is your first housing tutorial, this is your first time messing with housing, definitely go do stuff on your own, watch some other tutorials, and then come back here when you think you know what you're doing. But without further ado, we'll get into it. Okay, so I'm going to be showcasing this in HTSL, if you don't know what that means, I have a full video on that, but it's basically just converting housing actions into text, so it's easier to read, easier to share to other people, and yeah, that's really it. If you've never touched HTSL, then you could probably get a good idea of what it means. We have our conditionals, we have stat changes, we have conditions, like if the player has a group. But yeah, the base idea is just an easier to read version of housing actions. So to get started, we're going to make a toggle for the anti-cheat alerts. So we can make a toggle, we can go to the housing menu, go to systems and go to commands and we're going to create a new command. I just called it alerts and the code for it is already in, but to show you what it actually is, here it is. So first we have a conditional that checks if the player has the group admin or higher. Now you can do this with your own group. Maybe you want everyone to have permission for alerts. I don't know why you would do that. Maybe you have only staff members and this is what it means here. So if you have the group, the staff group or higher. Then we'll continue, we won't do anything, but otherwise, in the else actions, we'll let them know, nice try, just, just as a little message, we'll play a sound, and we'll just exit out, so none of the rest of the code here will run. And then now this code, we check if the stat AC, now for this video, anything, or in the series, anything with AC slash, stat wise, is just to let you know that that stat is for the anti-cheat. Just for organization of stat names because sometimes they have a lot they can be confusing but anyways we have ac slash alerts we check if that's equal to zero which if it is zero we're classifying as false so we don't want anti-cheat alerts to be sent and uh one as true we do want anti-cheat alerts to be sent which the code for that is in a bit later but if it's zero we'll set it to one play a sound send a message this part's up to you otherwise which means it's not zero then we'll set it to zero and disable anti-cheat alerts and tell them it's disabled or whatever we want here. Okay, so that just to let you know that is the toggle for alerts. So if we do slash alerts now, assuming we imported that, we will now be able to toggle alerts and we want to uh, have those on so we can see them later in the video. Okay, one more thing before we actually get into the first check, which is speed or uh, fly. We have an alert function and this is just literally just a function. So if we go in here, we have a alert function right here and the code for it is to check if the stat anti-cheat alerts is equal to zero which means that we should exit because we don't want to display the alerts. This is the function for displaying alerts. And then we have a global stat AC slash ID, and this is standing for the ID of the alert we are sending. So this function is triggered for all players when housing determines that we need to send an alert. And depending on the check, which I'll show you, uh, eventually we do go over more checks here, but right now we just have fly and one equals fly. So if the ID is equal to one, then we'll send a message. I have it a little prefix that says hack, um, standing for housing anti-cheat i'm sure very very uh very very cool i know but um we display some stuff here we just say the player with the player id might be flying we display stuff like their x y and z oops as well as their violation count and their ping and i'll go over violations in a in a bit these are for other checks which we'll go into later uh in later videos okay so now it's time to actually determine if the player is speed or hacking or whatever you want to call it so we have two functions for this check. Now it probably can be condensed. I just think it's fine the way it is. But in this first function, we have distance. Now distance, if we go back in game, we go to functions, we have our distance function here. If we right click, we wanna set the automatic execution time to this function to seven ticks. Now I found seven ticks works best. 
if you want it to be more sensitive, lower it. If you want it to be more uh, not sensitive, I don't know the word, hot, uh, make it higher. Just know that you will need to change other values in the actual code to make it work properly. I'd recommend just setting it to seven unless you want to go through these tests and see which one works best for uh, your house. Anyways, now this is the function that will trigger every seven ticks. So first we have a conditional that checks if the stat last x is equal to the player x which is a placeholder. I have a whole full video on placeholders. It will be in the top right if I remember to put it there. We also do the same for last y, checking if it's equal to our y, as well as our last z, checking if it's equal to our z. So what we're doing here is just checking if the player's location is equal to these set values. Now, if originally they won't be. So we'll update them to our location. So last x equals our x, y, y, z, z. But before we do that, we'll trigger our function speed, which is what calculates um, to see if they are possibly speed or flying, fly hacking, whatever. So once again, if the values are the same, which means they haven't moved, we'll exit out. Otherwise, we'll trigger our function speed and update the values to our new um, coordinates. Okay, so now we have a speed function. And the speed function is just if we go to our functions, is just a function. There's nothing special. There's no uh, automatic ex execution. But anyways, if we go back to our speed function, we have a conditional that checks if the player has admin or higher, which means we don't want them to be triggered by the anti-cheat or they have the permission fly. The reason for this is because if players are actually flying and they can fly in the house, they, then they shouldn't be targeted by the anti-cheat. So in that case, we'll exit out. Now real quick, some stuff that triggers the anti-cheat is teleports, super fast movement, launch pads, stuff like that. So if you want, you can set up regions for certain parts of your house. Some of you know about this house, but it's a PvP house that I've been working on for a while. There's this part here where you have these launch pads where if you look up, then you get sent up in the air. And because you're moving so fast, you could get triggered by the anti-cheat. So there is actually a region here, a big region, that says that if you're in this region, so for example, in region tower, then it will also exit. So you may want to do that in areas where there's fast movement. But besides that, we'll set our stat that we'll just call uh, anti-cheat average distance to zero. And I'll show you what this means later. But basically we're gonna calculate the difference between the two values of the X, Y, and Z and add it to our average distance. So how do we do that? Well, we'll check if the last X is equal to the player's X, which means that they haven't moved on the X axes or axis, whatever. So we'll set the anti-cheat X distance to zero. Otherwise, which means they have moved, then we'll set the X distance to our X location and then decrease our x distance by our last x location. I'm sure my handwriting is awful here, but to visualize it a little bit better for you guys, let's say our x location is 12, so we are currently at 12, but our last tick, we were at 10. So we moved a total of two blocks. Now for to actually calculate this, we can do 12 minus 10, so our location minus our last location, and we'll get two. So we moved a total of two blocks on the x axis, or axis, whatever, I'm gonna make fun of no matter what I say. Now there's a problem where just in case it were to go in the negative, we'll check if it's a negative value, so less than zero, which in case we'll just multiply it by negative one. And this will just completely fix it. It's as if we were doing absolute value in housing. And then we'll take our average distance and increase it by our x distance, or the distance moved on the x axis. And that's it for really just calculating the distance. Now we just do the same exact thing for our y as well as our z. I'm not going to go over those. It's literally the exact same thing, but for the Y and Z. And then down here, we have a conditional that checks if our average distance is greater than eight. So let's say we were just running our house with this. We were just running it with this code. Well, you can see on the scoreboard that um, if I'm moving, you can see that the average distance is going around the lowest I'm seeing is two and the highest I'm seeing is four. If I were to sprint jump, we might get four, we might get five. Uh, yeah, around that value. But let's say we were flying. Well, if we were flying, we get around seven, eight, nine, we remove up, we might get a little higher, so we're getting 12. And now, because we are a staff member, we're, we're not getting flagged. We're not cheating, we're actually flying. But if you were cheating and actually moving those high values, then, well, that's probably cheating. If you're moving anything less, anything higher than eight for high amounts of time, then they might not be legit. So let's check if our average distance is greater than eight which if it is, then we'll increase our fly vios, standing for fly violations, by one. Now, why are we using violations? Well, let's say the player was teleported. If they were uh, launch, using a launch pad, something like that, it'd be really fast movement, so they would get flagged. It's most likely that they're not teleporting very large amounts, like, like really, really fast. 
So as long as that value, that number, is greater than 10, which means they're flying around really fast for a long period of time, then we'll go ahead and send an alert, uh, which is right here. We'll trigger the function alert for all players, which we saw earlier only triggers it if you have alerts enabled. And we set a lot of information to a global stat. And global stats, because they're accessible from anywhere, we can see here that if we were to use them, then it would display that player's information. So we set the player ID to the player ID. Now, of course, if your house doesn't have player IDs, you might not want to use this. Their X, Y, and Z to their X, Y, and Z. Their ping, their violations, and then we alert. Um, and then we alert. Also note here that the AC ID is set to one because this is the fly check. We don't want it to get uh, flagged for any other checks that we might do in the future. So it's one, which is dedicated to the fly check. Now, one last thing before we test this, if we, we shouldn't have our fly violations go up. So we should, we should reset our, before we test this out, we should reset our fly violations. Meta saw in chat, we have an anti-cheat violations reset. So I have a function in here that simply uh, resets violations every 1200 ticks, which is also known as just one, one minute. So every one minute, what do we do? Well, we set our fly violations set to zero. Now, optional here is I just send a message so we know when the violations have been reset. On the scoreboard, you can see my distance and my fly violations. If I were to fly around, then this uh, the fly violations would go up. And once it gets to, I think, 10 or, oh, wait, I'm not getting flagged because we have to do slash alerts to toggle on alerts. And there we go. We are getting flagged. And you can see that player number zero might be flying. That's me. I don't have player ID set up in this house. That's why. Oh, our violations reset, so now we have to actually earn those violations again, so you fly around for a certain amount. It gets to 10, and now we are getting flagged. And that's really it for the first part. We went over how to make alerts, how to make toggling alerts, the base idea to violations, and we probably went over the easiest check, which is checking if our movement speed is way too fast to be normal, which if so, we alert online staff members. From there, staff can TP or do whatever they want and see if the player is actually cheating. Do note that false flags can happen if the player is lagging a lot, if uh, there's issues with the housing. Maybe you do have a lot of teleports, I don't know. Yeah, it's not a good idea to kick them out of the house or ban them. It's important to watch them and see if they're actually cheating. You don't want to falsely punish someone if your house was being a little buggy. But yeah, it's the end of this video. If you guys really enjoyed it and you want to see more checks, such as um, uh, actually a really accurate reach check, or I shouldn't say that, a semi-accurate reach check, as well as a kill or a check, which actually does work pretty well, surprisingly. Then let me know that you do enjoy this video by liking it and commenting, saying that you do wish to see more. I've said this in every video, every video the past few months, but I am currently still in school. However, it is almost over, so I will soon be going crazy with the videos, the live streams, and all that. I appreciate the support. I thank you for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.